sick of people at ESPN or Sports Center who think they have their heads on their shoulders but really don't? Well, it's time for the Jimmy the K Sports Show. We're going to give you the most urgent sports news. Now sit back, buckle up, and get ready for the number one sports show on the web. Here we go, my sports friends. Let's ready to rock and roll. Sit back and party. How y'all doing this Tuesday evening? It's me, your host, Jimmy the K. You see me each and every Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time, here on the Jimmy the K Sports Show, here on Ustream, and now on Facebook Live. This, I believe this is our third week here on Facebook Live, as we continue to get a little bit better and get uh, acquainted with Facebook Live. I'm, I'm starting to like that, kind of get a little technical... Uh, technically savvy so to speak when it comes to facebook live so i appreciate y'all each and every week stopping by and uh you have the opportunity to ask your questions here on facebook live or on Ustream as well right now so just uh whenever available whenever you feel like just pop up the questions and i'll answer them live at any point in time but we're going to start off a little bit we're going to start off with the nba i want to uh, talk a little bit about the NBA, what's been going on with the Oklahoma City Thunder, the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, the Toronto Raptors moving on to play the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. So that's pretty special right there. And then uh, towards the end of the show, middle to the end of the show, we're going to discuss the suspension coming uh, about to uh, Jose Batista and Ruth Ned Odor of the Texas Rangers, plus multiple other players for the Texas Rangers and the uh, Toronto Blue Jays as well so sit back buckle up and uh here we go so the uh, oklahoma city thunder are in the the uh, western conference finals right now the oklahoma city thunder last night winning again uh 108 to 103 yet again and for allegedly the third game in a row it looks like the referees have blown calls it's getting ridiculous in a way because you know, every time the Oklahoma City Thunder win, it seems like these refs allegedly blow calls. You know, Russell Westbrook should have been called for this. Russell Westbrook should have been called for that. Oh, we missed that call. The truth of the matter is, did they really miss the call or did they not? My personal opinion is they didn't miss the call. You know, every sport has, you know, the team that they want to see move on. You know, the ratings... Television ratings would say that the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State uh, Warriors would be the better TV atmosphere, the better uh, ratings atmosphere. The ratings would go through the roof with the Cleveland Cavaliers and the uh, Golden State Warriors. But yet you look at the Oklahoma City Thunder and you look at the Toronto uh, Raptors, and those two teams together could bring in good TV ratings as well. So... You know, these these allegations that the refs are blowing calls is getting a little out of hand. You know, for three games in a row, the last two games against San Antonio Spurs, supposedly, you know, the Oklahoma City Thunder had call, no calls against them in the last, you know, 20 seconds or so to lead them to the win. And now, allegedly, last night, uh, they had a blown travel within the game call that wasn't called against Russell Westbrook did I see the game no I didn't I you know I I, uh, I, I used the uh, game tracker on the ESPN app it's about the only time that I use ESPN is, is for their little game tracker you know I watched about the first half and after the first half I didn't think it was going to be all that great so I decided to turn in and go to bed. Well, I woke up this morning, and the Oklahoma City Thunder had won. So congratulations to the Oklahoma City Thunder. But the big question is, you know, will the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Cleveland Cavaliers bring in the same amount of TV audience, uh, the same amount of ratings that would be quite possible for the TV ratings to go through the roof? It's quite possible. However, I don't see the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Toronto Raptors bringing ratings very well through the uh, th through the ratings category that is of uh, television. So, with that being said, congratulations to not only the Oklahoma City Thunder beating San Antonio and winning last game uh, against the Golden State Warriors, 
to take game one in the Western Conference Finals. But congratulations to the Toronto Raptors who who moved on in, in, in great fashion to play the Cleveland Cavaliers. Although I have the, uh, the, Keeble, the Cleveland Cavaliers winning in five. So, with that being said, I want to switch gears to Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball and that of the altercation of Rufnet Odor and Jose Batista. Uh, I, I have it up on the All About Sports Zone uh, Facebook page. So if, if you have not liked the page, go there and, and like that if you have the opportunity to. Uh, it's got the fight up there. Uh, you know, I discussed this in a special edition last night, a special report, so to speak, on the Jimmy the K Sports Show. A lot of indications was that this scuffle Sunday was because the uh, Toronto Blue Jays had it coming. It was retaliation. You know, I already stated yesterday, and I really don't want to get into it too much more today, but I already stated that it had nothing to do with the bat flip in Game 5, okay? You know, yeah... You know, why Why would the Rangers wait till the last game that they're going to play the Toronto Blue Jays, the last time they're going to see them this year, to start grief with them? Why would they do that? You know, my personal opinion is what happened was this, and I stated this last night, was... And Desmond in the half inning before the the fracas, the fracas went out. And uh, Ian Desmond hit the three run shot. Didn't have as good of a bat flip, but hit the three run shot. Look, had a bat flip. Did his home run deal. The Rangers did their celebration of fist bumps and arm bumps and everything else. Then the next half inning comes up. Jose Batista comes to bat. Matt Bush, who was only in his second game in the major leagues, in my opinion, was pitching inside to Jose Batista. Did he intentionally hit him? No. Jose Batista, and you'll see this in Major League Baseball because pitchers will do this. Batters that have a tendency to crowd the plate, pitchers will pitch inside. And when they pitch them inside, what happens is it brushes them off the plate. What happened with Matt Bush was he was trying to pitch inside and it accidentally got Jose Batista. Was it retaliation for something that happened in game five of last year? It couldn't have been. Matt Bush has has no... no uh, no, uh, he has no no uh, skin in this game. He wasn't with the team last year. So why would he intentionally throw at Jose Batista and hit him? That makes absolutely no sense. Now, what happened after that was Batista gets on base. Now, this is my personal opinion is that Batista gets on base either way, whether it's walk whether it's hit by pitch, whether it's a single, however he got on first base, he was going to go for the takeout dive. So Jose Batista gets on by being hit by a pitch. They hit into a double uh, a double play, whereas Beltre's going to second to Rufnet Odor. Odor's going to Mitch Moreland. Well, Beltre gets the ball, throws it to Odor. Odor is trying to avoid being uh, taken out in an illegal slide in MLB, what they consider an illegal slide now. He throws it to first base wide right, or wide left, excuse me. Practically winds out in the dugout. And from there, the score. The squirmus begins between the two. Rufnet Ador takes a shot at Jose Batista. Batista pushes Rufnet Ador. Ador pushes back. Batista mouths a couple of choice words. You, Unless you are paying close attention to the video, 
you know, he's, he's mouthing a few choice words. That's Batista for you. He's an arrogant airhead. And that's the nice way of putting it. There's, there's, there's a certain D word with a bag at the end of it that you could use to refer to, to, to Jose Batista. Cause that's just what he is. He plays the game hard nosed and he's one of those guys. However, he has a few choice words with Rufnet Odor. Rufnet Odor says, uh-uh. Punches him. Lands a hard right to his face. Adrian Beltre comes over. Bear hugs. Uh, Jose Batista tries to back him up. Says, no, you know, let's let's get out of this fracas. And what you get is you get a a melee of, of, of squirmish. The bench is clear. Joe Gibbons, who had already been ejected in the game, Joe Gibbons, the manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, that is, had already been ejected in the game, comes out onto the field and the squirmish, which is a big no-no. He learned this. He should have learned this from Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper got ejected, I believe it was a week ago, from the Washington Nationals. Then he left the field. Something was said or done. He comes back onto the field and got a game suspension. Well, Joe Gibbons... And did the same thing. He comes back onto the field and ensues suspension for him as well. The suspensions are as follows. And I'm going to give my, my two cents on whether these are, are, are justified or not. But to be honest with you, the majority of these are, are justified. So right now, the way it looks is Roof Net Adore gets a eight-game suspension. Rufnet Adore has already stated that he is going to appeal this. What that means is by appealing it, Rufnet Odor gets to play in those games until his hearing is set. So Rufnet Odor can play from now until the time that his, his uh, hearing is set for whether it be a week from now, two days from now. He's able to play in those games. Elvis Andrus, who allegedly threw a punch, at Josh Donaldson has been suspended for one game. One game for landing a punch to Josh, Josh Donaldson. So a one game suspension for Elvis Andrus. And he he uh he took he took the suspension and he's sitting out this evening. So Elvis Andrus will sit out this evening. He'll serve his one-game suspension. He'll be back tomorrow as well. Jose Batista getting a one-game suspension. My thoughts on that. You know, here's the thing. Roof net, uh, the roof net door suspension, I felt, would be justified. I honestly thought he would get at least a seven-game suspension. And as we've seen... Major League Baseball has given him eight-game suspension. He is appealing that, and by appealing that, as I just stated, he is able to play until that time of the hearing is set. So, eight games for Roof Net Odor, you know, I felt was justified. Seven, you know, I felt, again, like I just stated, seven games was what I had previously predicted last uh, last night on a, on a special edition of the Jimmy the K Sports Show. The Jose Batista one game, you know, it was an illegal slide. We understand. Well, we understand that it's an illegal slide in Major League Baseball. It's a new illegal slide. You're not supposed to take out these guys. What we saw was that Jose Batista clearly tried to take out Rufnet Odor. However, it does in some ways look like Rufnet Odor tried throwing at Jose Batista's head. You know, I've I've got to give a give a unknown bias as to if you know I'm not on sides here. However, does that justify fights in Major League Baseball? It doesn't justify fights. And a matter of fact, you know, I, I asked the question on my, my personal Facebook page, not the All About Sports Zone page, but 
my my personal Facebook page and ask for for uh, some feedback as well. And and basically what what the, the 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 few comments that I got was was you know while you know we understand that Jose Batista is a punk, he's got an attitude. Uh, you know, we love Rufnet Ador. This type of, of stuff is not justified in sports. I have to totally agree with the people commenting like that. You know, is this type of fighting encouraging other teams to do the same thing? You know, will a fight like this encourage... Uh, let's say the Boston Red Sox to go after the New York Yankees from something that happened two or three years ago. You know, it's quite possible. And, and fights like this do encourage teams, at least championship caliber teams to do things like this. And this is something I've said all along from, uh, you know, from a, a week or two back is that this Texas Rangers team, the way that they have put the team together, the way that they have each other's backs, the way that they are aggressive, the way that they are, this just has a championship feel to the organization. It's, you know, Ron Washington, do not get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. Ron Washington, in my opinion, was by far one of the best managers in Texas Rangers history along with Johnny Oates, two of the best managers right there. However, uh, Jeff Bannister right now is proving that he's got these guys back no matter what. And these players have each other's backs no matter what. By doing that, you're sending a message to the rest of the organization, the rest of the team saying, hey, you know, if we're going to go down, we're not going to go down without a fight. So does this encourage other teams to do the same thing? You know, in times of despair, in times of, of, of lowliness, Troy, to answer your question, I could see something like this sparking uh, or, or being the fuel that sparks a fire underneath a team that may be, you know, third or fourth or fifth in the division. I could very well see this being the type of th thing that sparks a fire underneath a team like that. You know, every fight, I, I couldn't truthfully tell you if every fight is different. You know, media reports is that this started game five of last year. It's possible this did start game five of last year, but, you know, some of it may have started game five of last year, but did Matt Bush throwing to intentionally, intentionally, notice how I'm using the quotes here, intentionally hit Jose Batista. He was not even part of the organization, so... You know, that would that's going to be something that's going to be down the road. Is it is a fight between Matt Bush and Jose Batista going to be something that's different than that of the fight that ensued from Rufnet Ador and Jose Batista? Quite possibly, but what you have to understand is that no matter who the the player is, they're always going to have the team's back. You know. I am not a big proponent of these fights <clears throat> in Major League Baseball because, you know, this this is a professional sport. This shouldn't be done this way. However, I am a proponent to see teams having each other's backs when teams need to have each other's backs. Could a fight like this ensue a team like the, let's say, the uh, Angels or the uh, Oakland Athletics, or even the Houston Astros, or or a team like the Arizona Diamondbacks or the Los Angeles Dodgers, to to increase their their stamina, increase the light underneath them, 
to better the organization. Quite possibly. I, I feel very strongly that sometimes, even though I am against, you know, against fights in Major League Baseball or in sports like that, I am a strong and a firm believer that sometimes things like this need to happen to help organizations jump the hurdle, so to speak. So, as you know, Odor gets an eight-game suspension, justified. Elvis Andrus, one-game suspension, he's not going to appeal it. I feel that's justified, even though I did not see, and I, I've looked at the video several times, you know, if not 50 or 60 or 70 times, and trying to figure out where Elvis Andrus is in this. However, the one-game suspension, he's not appealing, and so therefore Elvis Andrus is not playing tonight. You have Jose Batista going in for an illegal slide, trying to take out Rufnetador is one game enough. Honestly, in my opinion, for the 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 arrogant airhead that Jose Batista can be at times, one game isn't justified because Batista gets that one game suspension. He's going to try taking out another second baseman. That's just the way he plays, whether that be right or wrong. Then you have Joe Gibbons getting a three-game suspension for re-entering the ball field after being suspended or uh, being ejected. He was ejected from the game during the skirmish of the eighth inning of the Texas Ranger games, comes back onto the field. That's a big no-no. We saw that with Bryce Harper. He gets a three-game suspension. That's very justified right there. Uh there's another player for the Toronto Blue Jays that got a game suspension that was uh, justified. Matt Bush gets a, uh, a fine for, for hitting Jose Batista. You get uh, Hell getting a, a fine. You get Steve Bouchelle with a fine. You literally have eight to ten. Uh, you, you at least get six fines out of this. And, and four suspensions. And all of them are justified. All of them are justified. It's not something that needs to be done in Major League Baseball. However, at times, I can see it being necessary to help get your team over the hurdle. As you saw, when Jeff Bannister was leaving the field after that squirmish, if you watch the video, he's clapping his hands multiple times going, let's go, let's go, let's go. He's continually clapping his hands, trying to, to fuel that fire underneath his organization to push him over that hump because he knows that they have blown games before with a lead. So Jeff Bannister doing what he can to help fuel his organization. The Toronto Blue Jays doing everything that they can to fuel their organization. Do I see something like this happening again if the two teams meet in the playoffs? I see something like this happening every time these two teams face off, no matter who the pitcher is. No matter who the players are, every time these two teams face off, there's going to be a squirmish because there's bad blood between these teams. But all this is justified. Can I sit here and say Odor shouldn't have got an eight-game suspension? No. Without cause, I cannot. Andrus, can I say that? He shouldn't have been suspended? No. Without cause, I cannot. All these are justified. They had to be handed out. They have to be dealt with. It's part of the consequences when something like this happens. To switch gears, you know, out of everyone that watches me out there, how much I love ribbing Stephen A. Smith. Although, the multiple times I've tweeted Stephen A. Smith, I've messaged him, 
you know, I've messaged ESPN about his antics. I've yet to get a tweet or a message back from Stephen A. or or from ESPN to get a debate from him. This coming on the heels of Stephen A. Smith saying that he challenged Kurt Schilling to a debate after Kurt Schilling publicly stated that ESPN only hires racists. I can't sit here and justify or not justify whether ESPN hires racists or no racists. I really can't. I can say without bias that at times Stephen A. Smith has a little bit of race baiting in his bones. He has a little bit of fire lit underneath him. That's that of race baiting. And you know, as as a fan of of sports and as a fan of uh, of talk sports radio, his antics are becoming more political than what they are sports wise. And that's the biggest reason why you're seeing a lot of hosts leave ESPN. So I challenge yet again Stephen A. Smith to a debate. However, I probably will never hear from the guy. So you challenge Kurt Schilling, Stephen A. See, you know, I have nothing better to do, you know. So I challenge you, Stephen A. Just bring it. Bring it. Bring it what you got. Switching gears, the uh, Atlanta Braves fired manager Freddie Gonzalez. And allegedly and reportedly, the way that they fired him, the, the way that he found out that he was fired was through a flight itinerary. That's kind of worse than text, isn't it? Isn't it? That's kind of... That, that's kind of like your 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 girlfriend breaking up with you over text, isn't it? Uh, general manager so and so of the Atlanta Braves. Uh, yes, I this is my flight itinerary to Philadelphia. We play the Phillies up next. Uh, excuse me, Mister Gonzalez, but this is not void anymore. Say what? It's kind of like your ex girlfriend breaking or your girlfriend breaking up with you over the text kind of scary so the Atlanta Braves finally fired Freddie Gonzalez you know I it's always the manager that gets the axe when it's not always the manager's fault a lot of times it's the player's fault because the truth of the matter is if you're not playing for the manager then you're not playing for the team with that being said this is this week's Jimmy the K sports show I thank you for stopping by each and every week here to the Jimmy the K Sports Show at 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time here on Ustream and now on Facebook Live. I want to tell you about a little endeavor that is going on between myself and American Broadcasting School. I, I um, did state this a little bit last week and I'm going to, to reiterate this this week. I have uh, publicly messaged both the American Broadcasting School Arlington and the American Broadcasting School Oklahoma City uh, with a message for looking for co-hosts. I know uh, that's something that I feel like would be something that you as fans would enjoy, not having to listen to me talk all the time, but also having the opportunity to get unbiased opinion from not only myself, but a co-host or two or three. So... I'm working right now with the American Broadcasting School, Arlington and Oklahoma City, and have already received the email from, from at least one, one student that is interested in joining the show. And I'm in contact with this student, so hopefully uh, this is something that will at least take a month. So, you know, if, if me and this person get in cahoots and, and can, can work it out, then probably about a month from now, we'll switch gears. We'll probably continue to, to stream here on Ustream. However, we'll go to Google Plus as, 
as now with Google Plus, you can do the picture in picture and all that other good stuff for sports shows. So we'll jump to Google Plus there to where you can see me and the co host do the show. And, but we'll continue to do Facebook Live. This is something that I feel like is is something that I like doing not only Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., but it's also something that I can do during the week, not only sports-wise, but to talk to you guys, get your feedback, your thoughts on the show. And I have viewers each and every week, and I would appreciate your feedback. You know, since you're watching the show, give me your feedback. What are things that you would like me to talk more about? What are things you would like me to talk less about? What are things that you... You wish we would do more as a show. Co-host, no co-host. Um, do you like hearing me talk for 30 minutes at a time? Would you much rather me see a co-host or not? <sighs> All those good things. So I appreciate you not only stopping by on Ustream, but Facebook Live as well. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time here on Ustream and Facebook Live. Until next Tuesday. I am your host, Jimmy the K. Peace out.